In this video, I'm going to be talking about my final impressions for the New World beta now that I've played 181 hours and the beta is over. I didn't really have any plans to do this video, but I've been asked by numerous people to give my final thoughts, so that's what I'm going to be doing in this video. Before I get into that, however, I did want to mention that we were part of the Battle for New World event, which was an event put on by Amazon with 66 streamers, and they were separated 33 into NA and EU. We were put into the EU side of things on the Covenant team, which there were 11 of us, and even though our team got second place in the event, we managed to score more points than any other player in EU, so that was pretty cool. And also, because we uh, took part in the event, we're going to have 50 copies of the game to give away at launch, and we'll have some exclusive drops on our channel. Getting back to my thoughts on the game, the biggest two questions that I've been asked are, has my opinion changed the game after 181 hours, and is the game ready for launch on August 31st? I want to get into the first one, which is, has my impression changed? I'd say for the most part, it's pretty similar. The things that I learned in 25 to 30 hours pretty much held true for the entire game. That's to say that the crafting of the game is still phenomenal. It holds up really well throughout the course of the game. The PvE content of the game remains to be lackluster. What I mean by that is the questing of the game never really picks up in any way. You're typically doing the same sorts of quests all throughout the game. I managed to complete the quest line in beta. This is not the full quest line for the game. But I got through the main quest line during the beta period, and it was pretty much uninteresting, was not very story driven, and there just wasn't a lot of inspiration in those quests. Speaking about the dungeons themselves, uh, or the expeditions as they're called in New World, I got to do five of them in total, and I got to do one endgame dungeon as I did manage to reach level cap at level 60. These are some of the most uninspired dungeons I have ever played in any MMO to date. Not only are the mechanics of them extremely straightforward in most cases, with only the exception of some of them having the last boss have something interesting to do, and even then we managed to do them first try or second try most of the time anyway, but the enemies in themselves are reused from the landscape. For instance, you fight animals that you hunt out on the thing sometimes, or the enemies that are you face in corruptions are scattered across the landscape are reused ad nauseum, and even in one of the endgame dungeons that we played, some of the enemies were the same as the first dungeon, just with a different skin, same movesets entirely. So these almost feel like an afterthought to me for a game that wasn't initially even going to have any sort of PvE content and was exclusively going to be PvP. You could tell that it seems like they tried to just throw something together to actually have some PvE content, and while it's fun to do, it gets old rather quickly. Moving along to the PvP aspects of the game, I think this is where the game really shines, and this is where I had the most fun. Um, and it shouldn't be a big surprise considering that the game was designed originally to be a PvP game. But what I really enjoyed was the open world PvP. This is where you flag up in a town uh, with either a group or by yourself and you go outside of town and anyone else who's flagged you can fight. That means if they're out, you know, harvesting rocks and they're flagged up, you can, you know, go attack them. Or if they're fishing <laughs> or do whatever, you know, uh, you can like literally get into some weird situations where you're fighting somebody that you had no intention of fighting. Or sometimes you get into some larger battles where there's several people out or, you know, tens or twenty of people out fighting ten or twenty people. And things can get really, really crazy out there and it's just a lot of fun whether you're in the, you know, group with a lot of people or you're in a group with a little small people or you're out by yourself. Talking about the war side of the PvP, this is where, you know, certain factions are fighting for dominance over the territories are going to be able to control the tax rates and gain other benefits. This is 50 on 50 where you're sort of either holding a fort or you're attacking a fort. I got to play on both sides during the beta, so I kind of have an idea how they both play. This is an extremely fun idea. It lasts about 30 minutes. Um, you have like a time it's scheduled, so like you know when to be there. Maybe you only have limited time to play. You know you know when it's going to be and you log in, you do your war and you log out. Or maybe you do some things beforehand, get together, then do the war, then log out. Pretty fun. The problem is that the connectivity of it was pretty poor. That means that a lot of times it was often a slideshow. Um, you know, living, you know, on the other side of the world from my server probably didn't help a little bit, but I heard complaints from nearly everyone that was involved, whether they were far away or not. Generally, what seemed to happen is, you know, a lot of people would converge on one of the territories that you need to hold, either inside the keep or outside, and everyone would just look frozen for long periods of time. This happened in several wars that I was in. I heard from other people that were, you know, literally just down the road from the servers that this was an issue for them as well. So... If this isn't something that gets fixed by launch, it's going to be a major ding in what is supposed to be one of the defining things for this game. Now, what's really interesting about this game is that even though the game has issues with PvE, and there are some issues with PvP, primarily with the battles, as I mentioned, um, the game is very addicting. 
Uh, I, I couldn't stop playing even today now that the beta's over. I've been looking forward to playing and I can't play and I'm going like, oh, I just want to log in and play. But what I will say about the game that makes it fun, in my opinion, is the community. It is a very sandbox driven game, meaning that the people inside the game make up a large portion of the experience and content for you. That's to say, you're gonna, your mileage is going to vary depending on who you're playing with and what server you're playing on. If you are a solo player, somebody who just wants to run on their own and craft materials and sell in the auction hall and doesn't really get involved in PvP and doesn't really do dungeons, you're probably okay. You, you can do whatever you want, but there isn't a whole lot of substance there beyond logging in, having some social interactions with maybe a couple people, then going to crafting. If that's your thing, that's totally fine. But if you're somebody who's looking for more of an experience than just, you know, crafting as a solo player, I don't think this is the game for you. There is a huge focus on joining a company, getting involved in battles, and finding people to do uh, the expeditions with. There is no dungeon finder in this game, so as a solo player, you're going to have to reach out publicly to try and get someone to do dungeons with you the old-fashioned way. And while that might not be a problem for you, Maybe that's not something you want to get involved with. I just don't think this is a great game for solo players. If you're a hardcore PvE player and you love that endgame grind, doing endgame dungeons, endgame raids, this probably isn't the game for you yet. Um, I could see this being something you might want to get involved with in the long run after they've added content and tweaked things around, but it's not there. Other games out there do this much, much better currently, and I just don't think it's going to be something that will hold you if that's your intention. If you're someone who wants to get involved in PvP and, you know, likes PvE experiences but isn't hardcore in either things, kind of, you know, wants to craft a bit, wants to PvE a bit, wants to PvP a bit, I think this is the game for you. I'm hoping this is the bulk of the people that are going to be playing the game because I feel like this is probably the marketed audience. Someone who doesn't take their PvE too seriously, someone who enjoys crafting, uh, even though crafting was not my biggest thing, but I really like it in this game. And someone who likes to PvP now and then when the mood strikes, but isn't necessarily a hardcore PvP player, I think you will enjoy this game. And for the hardcore PvP players, this is definitely a game for them. I mean, you're going to be able to go outside towns, find people, gank them, uh, form up, have battles outside of town, make your own battles, make your own rules out there, you know, get other people involved from other factions and really, like, create your own scenarios. There's jungle warfare, which is really, really fun. You can crouch. You can crawl on the ground, you can ambush people. There's just really all kinds of things you can do. Actually, one of my favorite moments from the beta was actually when we knew an ambush was going to come again at us eventually. So what we did is we had everyone in our group just clear cut the forest around us so we could see them coming. And then when they tried to ambush us, we just, you know, cut them down because they really couldn't because we could see so far away, which was really cool. So I feel like if you're a hardcore PvP player, between the wars and the things you can do on the landscape, you'll really enjoy this game. Moving along to the question about whether this game is ready for launch on August 31st or not, I have my concerns. I do feel like there are quite a bit of things that needs to be fixed in 28 days. That is not a lot of time for the amount of things that they need to get done. And because this game has already been delayed a couple of times, it doesn't give me a huge amount of confidence that they're going to be able to get it done in that time period. This is one of the reasons that I want to do a video at the launch of the game, because I will be playing at the launch. Uh, because I want to be able to tell you, okay, they fixed blah, but X is still a problem, or they fixed everything, or they didn't fix anything, or or where it is. There, I think there's a lot of people out there that can accept a certain amount of jank in their game and still enjoy it, like I did. Uh, and there's a certain amount of people who can't, and there is a threshold for everyone. And, you know, I think there's people out there who really want to know, okay, how much jank is left in it, and how much longer is it going to take them to fix? Maybe I'll just wait a month and play a month after lunch, or maybe I should wait a year. There's a lot of people who want to know that information, and obviously we'll have to wait and see how that goes. I think the most compelling argument to play New World at launch, no matter what they do with the game in the next 28 days, assuming, let's just assume for a second they do nothing, is that there is a certain immersion and experience you get in New World that you don't get in other MMOs. There is a huge, vast landscape, and I'm hearing that beta was only 50% of the total landscape size. I don't know if that's completely accurate. But let's assume it's just the same size that it is now, and forget about that for a second. It's very easy to get lost in the landscape. It feels like a new frontier. You can, you know, set up a camp somewhere in the middle of nowhere and go fishing or farm animals for materials or farm some rare resources, then craft some really cool piece of gear. Or you can, you know, have fun with friends out on the landscape just doing some corruptions or whatever. It's really easy to just kind of get lost in the beauty of the world because they did a really good job there. And it leaves the world open 
with so much potential to develop things. Maybe they'll uh, let you build buildings in the future or build your own farmstead and you can farm or maybe they'll create more content out in that vast world for you to do, more things to interact with. They really have a solid foundation in terms of the world and the universe for players to get lost in. It just feels like they didn't have a lot of time to fill it in. And that's the sort of thing that you really hope to see after launch. And, you know, it's exciting always to play a new MMO at launch. And there's a lot of people out there that, like myself, who've been playing their MMO, in my case it's Elder Scrolls Online, off and on for the last however many years that are just looking for that new experience. And I feel like there's a lot of people getting that in New World. Again, I will play at launch of the game and post another video letting you know, like, did they get these bugs fixed? Have they added anything new? What are they projecting to get added to the game in the future? Answering some of these questions for those of you that are still on the fence and try and get you that information. But I would love to know what you guys think. Did you guys play the closed beta? Was it what you'd hoped it would be? What do you think from looking at the game? What do you think from, you know, looking at what other people want to say? Is it something you want to get into? Or are you going to wait a while for them to add more stuff?